temperature is 45 degrees Celsius and wet bulb temperature is 27 degrees centigrade. Select the lowest possible condensing temperature from the following for an evaporatively cooled condenser A 25 degree Celsius B 30 degree Celsius C 42 degree Celsius D 48 degree Celsius to understand uh, this question to answer this question first of all we should have an idea regarding the cooling tower solution to this problem is given like this if you take a surface condenser of a steam power plant the cooling water circulating in the pipes denoted by CW extracts heat from the steam this is condensate liquid and this cooling water will go to the top of the cooling tower where it gets cooled to the by the air blown from below this is air atmospheric air blown into the tower the air blows the the air is blown into the tower cooling tower this is cooling tower what is the purpose of the cooling tower to cool the hot water coming from the condenser and this water is again going to the is again going to the surface condenser to pick up the heat from the steam so as the water is uh, pouring down from the top of the cooling tower it exchanges heat with the upgoing air both mass transfer and uh, heat transfer will be there resulting in the decrease in temperature of the water the lowest temperature to which water can be cooled in the cooling tower is wet bulb temperature of ingoing air that too if you provide the infinite area of heat transfer if infinite area of heat transfer is provided the lowest temperature to which water can be cooled in the cooling tower is WBT of ingoing air so in this case WBT is given as 27 degrees centigrade even if you assume that water is uh, leaving the uh, water is leaving the cooling tower at the exit at its exit as 27 degrees centigrade he is asking what is the lowest possible condensing temperature for this steam that should be more than uh, 27 that is uh, that is 30 degrees centigrade answer is answer is 30 degrees centigrade is the lowest possible condensing temperature of steam the next question what I do is from the 
gate 2000 when atmospheric air is heated at constant pressure it's a humidity ratio does not change b relative humidity increases c dew point temperature does not change D wet bulb temperature increases the atmospheric air is heated at constant pressure it means the solution to this problem is given as indicating the process on psychrometric chart this should be the sensible heating process in which humidity ratio does not change A is the answer relative humidity in fact it will decrease dew point temperature also would not change and uh, wet bulb temperature also increases all the psychrometric processes are assumed to be taking place at uh, constant total pressure so answer are, answers are A, C and D now I shall do a matching problem given in the gate 2000 itself it's the matching exercise group 1 group 2 number 1 marine diesel engine number 2 air conditioning number 3 steam power plant number 4 gas turbine power plant right side A two stroke engine B four stroke engine C rotary engine D cooling and dehumidification E cooling tower F rate on cycle G Rankine cycle F D slide wall looking at the left hand side first is marine diesel engine marine diesel engines are employed in the for the navigation and ship propulsion purpose for which the weight of the engine must be low and the power output should be very high such engines must be a two stroke two stroke diesel engines one for A marine diesel engine is two stroke CA engines 
are meant for marine application. Air conditioning means cooling with the dehumidification. Steam power plant runs on Rankine cycle. Gas turbine power plant runs on Brayton cycle also known as Joule cycle. For this laid wall we can put steam engine on the left hand side. I create steam engine on the left hand side for which the deslaid wall four stroke engine will be having more thermal efficiency than the two stroke engine but weight to power ratio is uh, uh, very less for the two stroke CA engines or diesel engines hence it is employed for marine application now let me do another problem given in gate 2001 for air at a given temperature as the relative humidity is increased isothermally A the wet bulb temperature and specific enthalpy increase B the wet bulb temperature and specific enthalpy decrease C the wet bulb temperature increases and specific enthalpy decreases D the wet bulb temperature decreases and specific enthalpy increases the solution to this problem could be given like this <coughs> representing the process on the psychrometric chart W is specific humidity at a given temperature the relative humidity is increased isothermally that means these are the relative humidity lines. Relative humidity will increase in this manner at same constant temperature. So what would happen to the wet bulb temperature? Wet bulb temperature also also will increase. And once the wet bulb temperature increases, specific enthalpy also will increase. Answer is both WBT and specific enthalpy increases because constant enthalpy lines means constant WBT lines. Answer is A. The process is going from 1 to 2 vertically upwards at constant DBT. Now I shall do a problem in gate 2003. A 2 kilowatt 40 liter water heater is switched on for 20 minutes the heat the heat capacity 
Cp for water is 4.2 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Assuming all the electrical energy has gone into heating the water increase of the water temperature in degree centigrade is A 2.7 4.0 14.325.25 The solution to this is heat capacity power or is equal power of the coil is 2 kilowatts that is 2 kilojoules of electric power is consumed in one second total time of running the heater is 20 into 60 seconds therefore energy heat energy released due to the electric current passage is equal to power into time 2 into 20 into 60 kilojoules this should be equal to the mass of water into specific heat of water into delta T temperature rise of water because he has taken 40 liters of water 1 liter of water has got 1 kg mass we have got 40 kg into Cp of the water is 4.2 into temperature rise is delta T this is 2 into 60 into 20 implies delta T temperature rise of water is equal to 2 into 60 into 20 by 40 into 4.2 so many degrees Celsius this is the answer a similar problem like this was given in gate 2006 a hundred watt electric bulb was switched in switched on switched on in a 2.5 meters into 3 meters into 3 meter size thermally insulated room thermally insulated room having yeah temperature of 20 degrees Celsius the room temperature at the end of 24 hours will be A 321 degrees Celsius B 341 degrees Celsius C 450 degrees Celsius D 470 degrees Celsius in a room of size 2.5 meters into 3 meters a bulb is switched off switched on for 24 hours so 
heat generated uh, by bulb is equal to power of bulb into time. What is the power? 100 watt, 100 joule per second into 24 hours the bulb is on. 1 hour is 3600 seconds. So, you get 24 into 3600 into 100 divided by 1000 kilojoules of heat we get. That should be equal to the mass of air into C CV, CV of air, not CP, because heating is done at a constant volume, CV of air into temperature rise of air. The mass of air in the room is equal to volume of room divided by specific volume of air or volume of room into density of air that is 2.5 into 3 into 3 we can take the density of air as 1.18 kg per meter cube so many kg density of air can be assumed as 1.18 kg per meter cube therefore temperature rise of air in the room is equal to 24 into 3600 into 100 divided by 1000 CV of air can be taken as 0.718 kilojoule per kg Kelvin 2.5 into 3 into 3 into 1.18 into CV is 0.718. This gives the temperature rise of air in the room in degrees Celsius. The next problem would be given as a 1 ton capacity water cooler cools water steadily from 35 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. The specific heat of water is the water flow rate will be nearly A 13.33 liters per hour B 3.33 liters per hour C 200 liters per hour D 250 liters per hour. The solution to this could be given as 1 ton means 3.5 kilowatts that is 2 ton kilojoule per minute that is 2 ton into 60 kilojoule per hour. So, the cooling rate is 2 ton into 60 kilojoule per hour that is equal to mass of water into specific heat of water into temperature change of water. Therefore, mass of water is equal to in, kilo, in 
kg per hour is equal to 210 into 60 divided by 4.18 into what is the temperature change 35 minus 20 so we get the mass of the water in kg per hour 1 liter of water has 1 kg mass implies the water flow rate is 210 into 60 by 4.18 into 15 liters per hour. This is the answer. Consider another problem given like this. Air at 20 degrees centigrade dry bulb temperature and 40 percent relative humidity is heated upon Forty degrees centigrade using an electric heater whose surface temperature is maintained uniformly at 45 degrees Celsius. The bypass factor of the heater is A.20, B.25, D1. The solution to this if you draw the heating coil air is entering at T1 that is 20 degrees centigrade leaving at T2 is equal to 40 degrees centigrade this is heating coil the surface temperature of the coil T3 is given as 45 degrees Celsius therefore bypass factor of coil is equal to 45 minus 40 divided by 45 minus 20 that is 25 by 25 by 5 divided by 25 that is 1 by 5 answer is 0.2 the next question is in milk chilling points plants the usual secondary refrigerant is A ammonia solution B sodium silicate C glycol D brine the answer is Brine. Brine is a NaCl sodium chloride solution which is used as the secondary refrigerant. The function of the secondary refrigerant is to pick up the heat from the product or the commodity like milk and give that heat to the primary refrigerant which is circulated in the 
refrigeration system that is a function of the uh, primary uh, i'm sorry that is a function of the secondary refrigerant even calcium uh, chloride solution sodium chloride solutions are used as the uh, secondary refrigerants like in uh, milk chilling plants take the next question to fix the state point in respect of air vapor mixtures three intrinsic properties are needed yet the psychrometric chart requires only two because a water vapor is in the superheated state b the chart is for a given pressure c the chart is an approximation true values d the mixtures can be treated as perfect gas according to the gibbs phase rule for the air water vapor mixtures like atmospheric air we need three properties to be required to fix a state point but when we are drawing the psychrometric chart the chart is always drawn for a fixed total barometric pressure so one property is already fixed because we have drawn the entire chart for a fixed total barometric pressure and so only two properties will be required to fix the state on the psychrometric chart answer is b refer to the gibbs phase rule next question is solar energy can be directly used in a uh, yeah. vapor compression refrigeration system b vapor absorption refrigeration system C air refrigeration system D jet refrigeration system the answer would be vapor absorption refrigeration system in fact var system is always suitable whenever waste heat is available like solar heat answer is b the next question is 
the leakage in a freon based refrigeration system can be detected by using a oxyacetylene torch b halide torch c sulfur torch d blue litmus paper here the answer is halide torch halide torch uh, is used to detect the freon based or r11 r12 or r22 type of refrigerants next question is regarding the matching list 1 a c10 number b approach and range c do t by do p at constant h is not equal to 0 dh is equal to cp dt even when pressure varies list 2 has number 1 ideal gas number 2 van der waals gas number 3 si engine number 4 ci engine number 5 cooling tower number 6 heat exchanger. The answer for the CT number is CT number is used is used as the number to indicate the quality of fuel in diesel engines or CA engines. So CT number is more if for a diesel fuel it will it will resist the knocking tendency in a better manner. If C10 number is more for diesel it can resist the the knocking tendency in a better manner so if you look at the approach and range in a cooling tower as the water, hot water enters at THI cooling tower is a direct contact type heat exchanger where the hot fluid is the down pouring water and the atmospheric air is a cold fluid water leaves at I suppose THE range of cooling tower is equal to water inlet temperature minus water hot water exit temperature approach of cooling tower is equal to hot water exit minus wet bulb temperature of in going air 
the lowest temperature to which water can be cooled is a wet bulb temperature of ingoing air therefore if approach is smaller the tower is functioning better so if the for a tower to be called good cooling tower approach should be smaller and the range must be range must be higher if you look at the c dot t by dot p at constant h is not equal to 0 that means even when enthalpy is remaining constant the temperature is changing it means it should be the for the approach and range for the cooling tower for the c it should be the for the van der waals gas because for real gas or van der waals gas where joule thomson coefficient is not equal to 0 mu is a joule thomson coefficient which is dot t by dot p at constant h enthalpy is a function of both pressure and temperature so c is for the van der waals gas or real gas for ideal gas enthalpy is function of temperature only hence as long as the temperature is constant enthalpy also would be constant when the temperature changes enthalpy also would change so d is for d is for ideal gas similarly for ideal gas internal energy is also function of temperature only this is only known as joule's law of ideal gas hence the matching